Hello everyone. In this lecture, we will learn about the deterministic and non-deterministic grammar. And uh, deterministic man means that whenever we are uh, doing the derivations, we are sure about uh, which productions will be used for the derivations. But if we are not sure about which productions to be used for the derivations, so that grammar will actually be the non-deterministic one. Let us take an example. A produces alpha beta 1, alpha beta 2 or alpha beta 3 and so on and so forth alpha beta n. So in this grammar, what is happening that we have so many productions and we can select any of these uh, these n productions for the derivation. Let us suppose we have to derive a string alpha beta 3. So for deriving this string alpha beta 3, uh, we should start from A. What uh, in, in the process of the derivation, the maximum element that we can compare with the productions is 1 only. So we can have a match of only alpha in these productions. So number of look aheads that we can take for the for, uh, for doing the derivations is exactly 1. So we do not know that uh, which of these productions should be used because in each of these productions we have the alpha. So let's say we have taken this alpha beta 1 production. So now this alpha and this alpha has a match but now this beta 3 which has to be which had to be derived does not have a match with this beta 1. So what we will do we will do the backtrack. So we will backtrack and we will now take the production alpha beta 2. Again, there is a match of this this alpha, but there is no match of this beta b b three beta three with the beta two. So we will again do the backtrack, and we will again take another production, alpha beta three. Now alpha has a match, and then beta three also has a match. So what we had to do uh, while doing the derivation, we had to backtrack. So the backtracks are not actually uh, helpful for us. So we will have to derive some mechanism by which this backtracking is not to be done. So the method by which we actually remove this non-determinism is called the left factoring. So how the left factoring is done? If we have A produces alpha beta 1 or alpha beta 2 or alpha beta 3, wherein we are confused that which productions to be used for the, uh, for the derivations, then we postpone the decision of uh, selecting the uh, productions in the next step. For example, what we are saying that it uh, is written as alpha a dash. And then, then, then this a dash can be beta 1 or beta 2 or beta 3. Okay. So for deriving this alpha beta 3, what we will do? We will take this production alpha a dash. And then this a dash can be reduced to beta 3 as required because we, we, are, we are have to select uh, one symbol only for as, as, as the look ahead. So uh, all these productions contain only one symbol. So beta 3 in any case will have a match and we will say that a dash produces beta 3 is the production that we are taking for the derivation. So this is the way we are actually uh, removing the non-determinism of these grammars using the left factoring. So we are postponing the decision of selection of beta 1, beta 2, beta 3 in the next step. So we have changed the grammar like alpha which is the common element of these three productions is taken here and we have then taken a new uh, variable or new, uh, new non-terminal that is a dash and then this a dash produces beta 1 or beta 2 or beta 3. So let's take some examples and to understand uh, to have more uh, clarity on this left factoring and the non-determinism. Let's take the first example for this. The first example is S produces I, E, T, S. This is the first production. And then this is I, E, T, S, E, S. And then A. Now if you see, let's take E produces P also. So if you see this I, E, T, S and I, E, T, S, E, S. Here, the I, E, T, S is matching here and I, E, T, S is matching here also. Okay. So if we have to derive the string, then we will be confused whether to use this, this production or to use this production. So we want to remove this, uh, uh, this, this problem or this confusion. So for removing this confusion, we will be doing the left factoring. So how will the left factoring be done? We are changing this to I, E, T, S, which is the common element and then taking the new symbol S dash. Fine. 
and then this s dash produces you see if we are taking entire thing here this will be epsilon and here es remains so we are taking es here. the rest of the productions remain same so e produces b will remain same and here s was producing a also that will also remain the same okay so we are taking the common element of the two productions and then we are applying a new symbol that is s dash now s dash will produce either epsilon why are we taking the epsilon because we have taken everything from here so what actually remains in this production is nothing so that will be epsilon let's take another example for this or uh, yes yes let's take one more production s produces a s s b s or a s a s b or a b b or b notice yes, but we see here that the a is the prefix of these three productions so whenever we are seeing one symbol small a we will not be able to make any decision whether to reduce it or not whether whether to reduce by this production or this production or this production okay while doing the derivation we will be confused so we'll be doing the left factoring just to avoid this so s produces small a and then s dash and what is s dash produces s dash produces first s s p s s a s p and then this bb now for these two production if you see the s is the prefix of these two production so again we will be confused whether to use this production or this production for doing the derivation so we will again do this left factoring so s is the common thing in these two productions so after s we are applying double dash and this s double dash produces sbs or asp okay now the uh, rest of the symbols will remain same s dash was uh, sorry s was producing b so that will remain same this s dash was producing bb that will also remain same so the final productions of this grammar is, uh, grammars are s produces a s dash oblique b this production then s dash produces s s double dash oblique bb this s double dash produces s b s or a s b so these are the final production of the grammar fine let's take another example s produces b s s dash and then a s dash produces s double a s oblique s a s b oblique b sorry s produces b s s double a s then b s s a s b b s b and then a so these are the productions so in these productions if you see that b s is common here b s is common here and b s is common here also so just to remove this confusion of which production which you we should use for the derivation we are doing the left factoring so for doing the left factoring the common elements are b s let's take a variable s dash okay now s dash will be the remaining element s double a s or this remaining element s a s b or the remaining element that is b fine now the rest of the elements remain same so s produces a so s produces a will be writing here Now, if, if you see that in these two production, S A and S A is the common element. 
we will again be confused whether to use this production for uh, the uh, derivation or this production. So we are doing the left uh, factoring again. So S dash produces the common element S A and a new symbol that is let's say double dash S double dash. And this S double dash produces the remaining element. So A S or S B. Here the remaining element is S B. Fine. Now rest of the elements will remain same. So S dash was producing B. So S dash will in any case be producing B. So what are the final productions for this uh, uh, after applying this left uh, factoring? S produces B S S dash and a small a and then this uh, S dash S dash produces S A S double dash oblique B and then this one S double dash produces A S oblique S B. So this is the left factoring. Thank you.